Welcome, for the Ministry of Tourism it's a pleasure to have you here, to share your experience and hopefully turn you into experts of our beautiful country. This webinar is another tool to help us in our aim to turn Ecuador into a world leading destination. And as the slogan says, we have it all, like nowhere else, all in one place, so close. The Galapagos Islands, the amazing coast, the marvelous Andes, and of course, the Amazon region. Initiatives of the ministry as the Cross Andean Tren Crucero has already achieved many international recognitions as the best luxurious train of South America. So we want to welcome you and to invite you to join us to learn more about our country from the center of the world to all the world. Welcome. And uh, uh, we're going to start with, uh, with our seminar, uh, just uh, for general information or general indications. Um, this webinar is going to take about 30 to 35 minutes, and then we will have a, a, a Q&A time, about 5 to 10 minutes. And during that time, we're going to send you uh, one question. Uh, this is to know um, if this webinar has been helpful, uh, helpful uh, for you to, to sell more Ecuador, and especially this amazing uh, product, uh, which is Tren Crucero and the other products of Tren Ecuador. And um, uh, the day of tomorrow, uh, we're going to send you another questionnaire. Uh, this is going to be just five uh, questions uh, test, just to know that you have actually learned the basic things uh, of this product. So when you have these questions from your customers, from your clients, you're going to be able to answer um, this important information. The Ecuador Railway Transport System began its, began its transportation in uh, the year of 72. So uh, probably most of us were even born at that time, and, and we were already building uh, uh, the railroad in Ecuador. The route between Quito and Guayaquil was officially opened in June 1908. It meant the construction of this route took around 76 years. So if you uh, take into account and if you consider this like right now, it will mean that if we start a project now, uh, our kids or probably our grandchildren will be the one who will, who will be seeing this project already uh, working. Uh, however, after this big effort that the country did, uh, the road and air trans transport development of the country uh, between the years 1950 and 1960 decreased the plane in effectiveness, which uh, meant that the plane uh, has lost uh, its uh, real importance. Well, here again we have uh, two pictures of uh, the old steam train uh, riding uh, to the end of Ecuador uh, in the beginning of the 20th uh, century. In the year 2007, uh, which is about um, already seven, eight years ago, I started the restoration project of Ecuador's railway system as part of the country cultural and historical heritage and that the great tourist product with a total investment of uh, approximately $300 million. Uh, actually, it not only started uh, as, uh, as part of a very important thing for the country, but uh, it was also the dream of many people in Ecuador who uh, um, were looking for to see the train riding again uh, through the uh, Ecuadorian uh, landscapes. I've been saying, uh, uh, saying that. And after $300 million, a train in Ecuador offers two main products. Uh, the first one is the half day and full day excursions. And the second day is the train crucero or uh, cruise train. We're going to um, uh, briefly check uh, the half day and full day excursions. Uh, right now, uh, train Ecuador offers eight uh, different routes of excursions. First one is train de la libertad or freedom train. Second one is the Bolchin train. Um, and then we have the uh, ice train going from Rivama to Urbina and the uh, ice train too going from Mambato to Urbina. As you may see this train, uh, they depart from one city and they go back to the same city. This is why they are only half day or full day excursion departing and coming back to the same uh, city. The next four excursions we have are uh, the ancestors trail uh, between Rivamba and Colta going back to Rivamba. Uh, probably the most popular one among the two operators, which is the Devil's Nose. And I said among the two operators because uh, if you see the other surface of the train, they are all beautiful. They, are, they all present great landscapes and great opportunities to uh, um, add to your uh, normal or regular itineraries uh, along the country. 
And then we have the Inca bed, so Baño del Inca. Uh, this is close to Inca Pirca, Inca rooms, uh, departing from El Tambo to El Rio Flor and going back to El Tambo. And then we also have the train of, uh, of sweetness, uh, going from Duran to Bucay and back to Duran. Uh, probably many of you are asking yourselves, why is the train of sweetness? And this is due to the amount of sugarcane plantations that you will find along uh, the, the path. Uh, this is um, the map of the main uh, Haldian Pool excursions. Uh, for instance, um, I'm going to show you here with this uh, uh, yellow uh, uh, color the route of the Tren de la Libertad, of the Freedom Train, uh, which is actually expecting to, uh, um, to increase uh, the route from Otavalo to Ibada and then to Salinas. Uh, many of you probably know that Otavalo is the place of the most indigenous, most uh, famous and biggest indigenous market in South America. So if you add uh, to this market the train, you have the perfect uh, two days or three days product for this area in the north of the country. And then we have uh, the train departing from Key to Pueblo Liche, which is uh, actually a station within uh, the Cotopaxi National Park, from where you can visit uh, part of this park. And then you also have the ice train, as I said before, going uh, from Mbato to Urbina and back, or from Rivamba to Urbina and back to Rivamba. Urbina is the highest uh, train station, which is uh, close to the uh, Chimborazo, the highest uh, snow capital mountain in Ecuador. From Rivamba, it's also the first uh, to Colton, going back to Rivamba. Here is the circuit of the Devil's Nose. We have the train of Sweetness uh, going to the Pacific Coast. And this is uh, in the south of Ecuador, close to the Inca Room. So as you may see, there are many different trails uh, along the country, in the north, in the south, in uh, the central Andes, going to the Pacific Coast, and, uh, and so on. So with all this information about the health day and food excursions, we are sure that in your future itineraries, you will start adding some of these health day or food day excursions to the regular itineraries that you already uh, program. And now let's uh, start with the train crusader which is one of the actually highlights of the Pelin Ecuador in, um, in the country. Uh, this is a full day uh, three nights program uh, departing from Quito, which is the country's capital city, uh, and arriving to Guayaquil, which is Ecuador's main port city. This is a train ride through the majestic scenery of the Andes mountains towards the endless plains of the Pacific coast. If you compare these to, let's say, uh, European countries, uh, to link Quito to Guayaquil, it's pretty much like linking uh, Madrid to Barcelona. So that's the capital city in the middle of uh, the country and the main port uh, in front of the ocean. So this is pretty much uh, why this is so important. Uh, general information about the route, the distance between Quito and Guayaquil is about 450 kilometers. Or for the American uh, people who are listening to this webinar today, it's 279 miles. The average speed of the train is 25 to 30 kilometers per hour or 15 to 18 miles per hour, uh, which means that the speed is not one of the main features of the train, but actually it's really good because uh, going at this speed will allow you to enjoy all the scenery, all the landscape, and uh, all the, uh, the attractions that travel along the way. I'm on uh, concerning the altitude, you depart from Quito, which is at uh, 2,152 meters above sea level. Uh, you have the, uh, the information in feet, 9,110 feet. And it arrives to Guayaquil, which is uh, uh, with at 6 meters above sea level, 14.73 feet. You can actually do the other way. So you can depart from Guayaquil at 6 meters and arrive to Quito at 2,152 meters. So for many people listening to us from uh, uh, North America or Europe, at the altitude of Quito, uh, you may be seen. But however, since we are right on the equator line, so the weather is, is not that cool, it's not that warm, it's just perfect. Between Quito and Guayaquil, we have a station of Urbina, which is uh, the station close uh, to the Chimborazo uh, volcano. And this one uh, is the highest point, at, uh, located at 3,640 meters, or 11,841 feet. If you see the map of Ecuador in this one, um, this is where we start in Quito. Uh, you ride through the Andes Mountains all the way down to the south. And after you reach Alausi, here you start the descent to uh, the um, uh, coastal plains through the Devil's Nose and then through the mountains uh, 
to arrive to finally arrive to Durand right in front of Guayaquil. So if you see this map, you're covering a good part of Ecuador, a good part of the country, and you are seeing two of Ecuador four worlds. Which are Ecuador four worlds? We have the Galapagos Islands here, we have the Pacific uh, coast, we have the Andes Mountains, and of course we have the Amazon uh, region here. So after you have uh, done the spring circuit, you have seen two uh, of Ecuador uh, different worlds. Um, about the train Crucero, this is a four coach train with a total capacity of 54 passengers. Uh, the train coaches have different teams and the instinctive features such as panoramic windows, table lockers, cafe bar, and an open balcony. So to have um, a better idea of the train, here we have the configuration. You can see uh, this picture that actually has been taken uh, right in um, across the baby's nose. And you see the coach one, uh, the two, three, and and four, that all you are wondering how do they look inside. So let's go to take a peek inside. This is the coach one. Uh, it has a baroque style with tables and chairs for uh, 24 people. You like the decoration of this train because I love it. It reminds me some uh, of uh, Quito Old Town uh, Church. Then we have uh, the coach two, which has a neoclassical style. I also love this kind of decoration. It has tables and chairs for 24 people. So if you have realized that uh, between the coach one and two, we have already the total capacity of the train, which is 54 people. So maybe you're wondering what happens with coach uh, three and four. So in the coach three, uh, which features a pre Hispanic style decoration, uh, we have a handicraft shop. Uh, we have the panoramic lounge that you can see here in the picture. And here um, you can also see the cafe bar. So this is a place uh, where you can go, sit down, relax, enjoy the landscape, have a conversation, or just uh, sit down to sip a coffee or a glass of, uh, of wine uh, while watching the great scenery at the end. This is a close-up to the cafe bar in the coach tree. So now you have an idea of how this looks. And then we have the coach four, which uh, features classic style of Ecuadorian Pacific coast with a long area and uh, an open balcony. So this is also another place where you can go, relax, uh, chat with your friends or with the family, and uh, have a great time during the, the circuit. I wonder you are uh, asking yourselves how the open balcony uh, looks like. So this is a picture of this area. Uh, and I know you know that you can go outside just to enjoy the fresh uh, air or to take pictures or, or any other activity you may want to do while on board. It is important to say that uh, during the visits and excursions, you are going to be always in accompanied by bilingual Spanish English tour guides. So you're not going to have any problem with uh, both languages. And of course, if you operate with different languages, the guides of Tren Ecuador and Tren Crucero, they also uh, have some uh, special conditions for um, other languages uh, guides. Then we have the buses for excursions and for the luggage because actually you are not bringing your luggage with you and the train. Um, they will uh, travel uh, along the way with the bus. And when you um, get off some uh, stations, train stations, to go and visit some of uh, the main products uh, along the area, you go by the tourist bars that are, that are waiting for you, and that make part of the whole uh, train operation. Once the um, adventure of the day is over, uh, you would like to have a nice uh, dinner and of course to be able to sleep well so the next day you can uh, start a new adventure. So this is why for dining and accommodation uh, they have thought about traditional haciendas and nice places so you can uh, have a relaxing time. So uh, of course it is important to say that you will not overnight in the train. It's a four day, three night uh, circuit but you, you, you will not overnight uh, on board the train but you will be uh, overnight in one of these the haciendas and the hotels along the way. Of course, all meals are also included, and uh, they, are, they will take place in selected places uh, with local gastronomy as well as international cuisine, so you can uh, taste uh, both. And now we're going to see um, the day-by-day -day itinerary uh, of the train uh, train crucero. So you can have a better idea about what exactly uh, you will be doing during um, this circuit. 
We start the first day, the person from Quito, as we have already seen, and we arrive only to Lasso, which is right here. It's not a long circuit, which uh, gives you the possibility to enjoy everything that you have uh, along the route. Uh, you have also the map uh, uh, here in, uh, uh, on the right of, uh, of the slide. So the circuit you will be doing this day is this one, from Quito to Lasso. The tour begins at 8 a.m. at Chimacali Station in Quito. Uh, the arrival to El Bolichi Station, and then uh, you have a transfer by bus to the Cotopaxi National Park, where you will be doing an easy trek on flat land around the Limpipunga, which is a glacial lake uh, at the Volcano's base. Then you have the transfer by bus to San Agustin de Cayo, Hacienda for lunch and to enjoy a performance of the local community dancers in this old Hacienda that has a, a great mixture of uh, architecture. Um, it has a combination of Inca, uh, walls from the ancient times, uh, from ancient Inca times, and uh, the later colonial uh, period. Uh, of course, uh, after lunch, you return to the train station to continue on board the train crucero towards La Sao station, where our bus will be uh, we'll waiting for, for you to drive uh, you to the hotel. The general accommodation uh, is a La Cienega, at the Verde, or the Las Rosas, depending on uh, availability. In the next slide, you, uh, you see a picture of the Cotopaxi volcano, which is one of the highlights uh, of the visit. Uh, this picture has actually been taken from the Limpio Pongo Lake. So on a clear day, you can actually have this, this view. Of course, there are some other days uh, when we have more clouds and you don't see like that. But anyway, you enjoy uh, the great uh, end this landscape of, of the area. Second day, we have the Lasso Riobamba circuit, departing from Lasso and arriving to Riobamba, which is actually right in the middle of the Andes. It's probably the, the middle uh, part between the north side and south side of the Andes in, in, in Ecuador. Here, after breakfast, uh, you will be transferred by bus to, to La Taconga train station. Uh, the day you can already include a visit to a flower plantation to learn more about Ecuador's world renowned, uh, renowned roses. The train uh, then takes us to Ambato, where we enjoy lunch at Roca Plaza Hotel, a converted heritage style uh, house. It's such a nice place to, to make a nice stop. After lunch, the train travels on towards the Rubina station to meet a very special person. Uh, his name is Baltasar Ushka, and he is the last ice collector of the Chimborazo volcano. In ancient times, the people used to go to the Chimborazo volcano to collect the ice uh, for special uh, dishes or for special preparations in the city of Yobama and in the surrounding towns. So uh, this is one of the last uh, uh, ones who are actually doing this, this activity. Uh, it is a great start because you will be learning more about the local culture, uh, knowing a very close uh, personal uh, uh, local character. And uh, if uh, you have a clear day, you will also be enjoying a great view of the Chimborazo I no cap it, uh, After this visit, the train takes us to the Obama station where a bus drives us to our hotel and, uh, and dinner. Either at the Bospungo or the Andalusa Hotel, depending on uh, the visit. We have now a view of the Chimborazo no cap volcano with 6,310 meters or 20,696 feet. It's the highest uh, no cap mountain of Ecuador. And actually, this one is. Uh, the closest point to the sun due to the bulge of, uh, bulge of, uh, of planet Earth on, on the equator. The day three, we have the route from Riobamba to Bukai, so we depart from uh, this area um, on an altitude similar to, to Quito, and we'll be arriving to Bukai, which is actually the entrance to the Pacific coast. So on this day, you're going to be changing a lot of weather. Uh, of landscapes, and uh, you're going to see, start seeing the difference between the Andes and the, and the coast. Uh, the day after breakfast, um, you will depart by bus to the Obama station to continue your ride. Uh, this time, uh, you're going to be pulled by a steam locomotive until reaching Colta station. So this uh, short circuit from the Obama to Colta, uh, you're going to be enjoying uh, the charm of, uh, of, a, of a steam locomotive in the first part. There, there you will have time to visit the Church of Barbaneda, whose walls dating back almost 500 years provide the first evidence of the arrival of Christianity in Ecuador. Later, back on train, 
you continue to warm out there where the Indian market is waiting to be explored. And you are going, you're going to have this day launch on the train. Uh, Indian market of uh, the Indian market of Walmart is a very local uh, fruits uh, and uh, earth products, uh, land products in um, this part of the, of the end. So it is actually really interesting to get closer to this part of Ecuador, uh, which uh, features a great uh, population of indigenous people. Then the train continues its journey to Alok Sea Station to begin the descent down the emblematic David Nose. Zigzagging its way down the mountainside, the train drops. 200 meters, which uh, will be about 600 feet, in just three kilometers. Passing on this engineering feat that has earned the Ecuadorian rail system the world's most difficult task. We continue by train to Bocay, the gateway to the coastal plains, uh, for dinner and accommodation at the Franco Lodge in this pleasant and temperate area because you're going to have a different kind of uh, warmer weather. In the next picture, um, you see um, an image of uh, the uh, there is no uh, circuit. So the train arrives from this side of the mountain and it goes all the way to reach this point and then it starts riding backwards. It goes all the way backwards to the other side of the mountain and then it will continue forward to arrive to the Simba Chibama station. So this is the famous uh, uh, there is no circuit. After Visiting the Sibama station, you're going to make a stop a little bit further uh, to have a great view of the mountain and to be able to make great pictures of this uh, uh, masterpiece of engineering. Then the last uh, day, uh, four day, uh, you have the circuit from uh, Bukai to Duran, so you have uh, spend the night here at Bukai. And um, this day you're going to be uh, riding the train along uh, the coastal uh, plain. So the kind of landscape you have in these days is going to be completely different than the one you have been seen there in the first uh, three days. After breakfast, uh, you depart from, um, from Bukai uh, towards the uh, center of fire station. And then the journey continues by back to the shore community. community. This is a shore community that migrated to the Pacific coast from the Amazon basin more than 70 years ago. Then uh, after visiting uh, uh, this uh, Shuar community and learning more about their uh, ancient local traditions and customs, uh, the bus will take uh, us to the San Rafael Hacienda for lunch and a visit to our cocoa plantation. So you're going to learn more about um, the chocolate and uh, where uh, it actually comes from. Then we take the train to our final destination, Duran Station. We will show the stop at Yaguachi Station to switch from the diesel electric locomotive uh, that you have in the first part to a steam drive uh, traveling engine. So this is going to be like, uh, for the guys that know uh, Thomas and friends, it's going to be the same kind of locomotive as, as Thomas. The train weighs its way through a plantation of banana, pineapple, mango, sugar cane, as well as white patties, marking its train with clouds of billowing steam. So, you know, even the crops or, uh, that you have along the way, they're completely different than the ones you have seen in uh, along the end. Then uh, if the arrival at one station and the transport is provided uh, in complementary base or to the, through the coast to take you to Waikid main hotels, uh, which, is, uh, which are Hilton Club, Alaberde, Hampton, Wingham, Grand Hotel, uh, and Sonesta. So Duran is a city right in front of Waikid. Um, they are just separated by the Wyatt River. So uh, the train arrives to the Duran station and then you're driven by bus uh, on the bridge to reach uh, Wyatt in the other side. This is a picture of the steam locomotive that you take uh, the last day. So this is, uh, for me, I would say this is one of the highlights uh, being pulled by this kind of old uh, ancient trains. So about train Ecuador, because you have already seen about uh, the two main products, how they and the excursions and the train from Pedro. Uh, I would like to say that in general, uh, all the train stations, uh, they offer general service, services that are available on all routes. So it doesn't matter if it's the train Cusero or the half day full day train, you will always have these general services in all stations. Some of the main ones are the train coffee shop, uh, Café del Tren, you also have the train gift shop or Tinder the train, the artisan market, and general services such as toilets. That in some stations, uh, you also have a museum 
or parking lot for people who are following. Just uh, some uh, examples of uh, uh, these services. This is the Salinas Renewed Train Station. As you may see, this is uh, one minor small station. However, I have used this picture so you can uh, have an idea that even the small station, they look, they all look good. This is the launch and entrance to the artisan market. This is the station of LLC. Uh, so right before doing the, the there is no circuit. Uh, and you see here through the door the artisan market. And this is the train coffee shop or cafe del train. This is in another station, this is in the station of Vibara, the north side of Quito. So as you may see, because probably some of you have already done the training in ancient or in another time, and all these services they weren't like this, so they didn't look like this. Now you start understanding that uh, not only the train, not only the coaches, not only the, uh, the railway have been recovered, but also all these services that make uh, an experience more uh, complete. Then you have the Tienda del Tren, the train gift shop. It actually helps the local communities that to sell their products. And by buying these products, you will also be helping uh, um, uh, the local communities and local people. Of course, the train Crucero. Uh, offers other circuits and destinations within Ecuador. I mean, they do not offer, but they are connected to these other uh, destinations. Like if you are starting in Quito, you can also visit the surroundings like Otavalo, Mindo, Papayaca, before doing the train or after doing the train as a pre or post tour. You have the Amazon region, or when you arrive to Guayaquil, you have the surroundings, like beaches such as Salinas, Montañita, or uh, natural reserves such as Manglaris, Chiruta. Or you can also continue your flight to the Galapagos, or you are going to also fly to, to Cuenca. In the next uh, map of Ecuador, uh, you see the, uh, the circuit between Quito and Guayaquil. So this is uh, all the circuit uh, that the train to sail uh, wide. And here you have the connectivity going to Otavalo or going to the Amazon, flying from Guayaquil to Cuenca, which is a 25-minute flight. It's very close. You can drive to the uh, coast, it's uh, an hour and a half drive, or you can fly to the Galapagos Islands, and you can uh, in this way, you can actually visit uh, three or, or, or even the four worlds of, of the country in, in one holiday. These are some of the pictures uh, of the places that you can visit before or, or after the train. Galapagos, the Pacific Coast, the Amazon, and Cuenca. Um, train Ecuador has already received awards and recognition. One of the main ones in 2013 uh, was a wider world project. Uh, by the British Guild of Travel Writers uh, Award. Uh, this was uh, awarded in London and uh, the United Kingdom. The Lonely Planet has also considered Train Crucero as the fourth best train ride among the worst unforgettable train trips. The Trip Advisor, uh, Trip Advisor also gave the Certificate of Excellence 2014. And in this year, 2014, uh, there are two main nominations, which is the Indicatory Promotional Success of the Latin American Travel Association in, uh, Community Award. And they have been also nominated as South America's leading luxury train by the World Travel Award 2014. When and how to book the train in Ecuador? Uh, it is uh, the four days and three nights train Crucero Quito Guayaquil or vice versa. Cost uh, for the public, this is the, uh, this is the public price, is 1270 US dollars. And for the full rate list, uh, you have here the link. Uh, we're going to upload this presentation to uh, the same website where you have registered for this webinar, so you can always have this presentation to use for your client or for uh, these links that can be useful. And you can, uh, of course, book uh, through your preferred DMT or destination management company in Ecuador to operate your favorite travel agency. Uh, if you need any specific information after the webinar, you can always check on the website uh, that are here, or you can also contact via email to the uh, email addresses uh, that we are showing uh, right here. So we would like to uh, thank uh, the Ministry of Tourism of Ecuador for organizing this, the campaign argument in Ecuador, and of course the people of Tren Ecuador who uh, have provided most of this information for, for this webinar. Uh, right now I'm going to start uh, um, a question. Uh, it's going to be one question, so you're not going to take a really long to answer this one. And uh, it's going to take about uh, two minutes to answer this. And right after that, we will start the Q&A for, for other five minutes. So I'm going to start this question right now. And uh, let's start thinking about a question that you may have 
to make it a, a, in, in, a, in a while. Okay, so now on your screen you will see you will see the option to, to answer um, the only one question we have for you today. So now we have only 40 seconds uh, to answer the question. So for the people that haven't uh, answered yet, please. Um, time is running out. We only have only 20 seconds there. Come on guys, not a difficult question. Okay, so now uh, we're closing uh, this uh, poll and we can uh, go and hear the Q&A time. Um, we're going to do this through chat. So you can uh, you you will see that on your screen you have uh, the option to write uh, your questions. Okay, we already have some uh, some questions. I think that they were from the beginning. Transmission, yeah. uh, the transmission when it was not. Okay, here we have one question. Uh, here we have Slav Ivanov from Tren Cusero, uh, which is actually here to help us with uh, to answer some of, uh, of the questions you may have. The first one we have is, what is the youngest age that a Tren Cusero can accommodate? Could a child of six years old go on a train? Uh, yes, uh, we don't have a minimum age. It's up to you. Um, it's the best thing to consult with a doctor if the kid is uh, very small and can uh, travel. But yes, definitely a six-year-old child can travel on the train. Then we have uh, another question. How many people on coach one? Uh, so this is for 24 persons? Yes, we have 24 seats on the first coach and 30 on the second one. Is the train crucero up and year round? Uh, we are operating currently seven months of the year. We have some breaks uh, for the maintenance and we will be op operating eight up to nine months next year. So we are increasing the departures. But it's not the whole year, so we have some breaks of one or two months in between. Okay, we have another one. When you book, do you request coach one or two at that time? Uh, do you keep the same seat for the four days? Uh, are there bathrooms on the train? Yes, uh, you can request uh, based on availability. You can choose coach one or two depending on which architectural style you like. Yes, we have four bathrooms on board the train. Is there an opportunity to take uh, a cooking class during one of the layovers at Hacienda? Interesting question. We are not doing this. However, uh, I'm sure something can be arranged so we can talk with the owners of the Haciendas and see if this is possible. I guess we should talk with Cake Boss to uh, offer something like that. Are uh, these weights commissionable? Yes, as uh, Rodrigo indicated, you should talk to your uh, DMC uh, to negotiate a commission, but they're all commissionable. 
that the two run in reverse, uh, so uh, it goes from keto from white kill to keto as well. Yes, we do both ways. We do keto way I kill four days, three nights, and we also have the options to do way I kill keto four days, three nights. Can a wheelchair person travel on a plane? Yes, uh, we have done this. Uh, there is enough space for the person to be accommodated. Uh, however, it's a bit complicated to uh, get off and on the train to do the excursion. So if a wheelchair, if a disabled person, uh, probably should stay most of the day on board the train. But we, we have this facility. Other than Baltasar Ushka, are there other characters people may meet uh, along the way? Uh, yes, we meet a lot of the local communities. Uh, I would say Balthazar is like the most iconic person that you'll meet uh, on the train ride, but we stop in the market of Guamote. We, we have uh, a great uh, excursion on day one where you visit the uh, Inca Hacienda in Cotopaxi, so there are many highlights around the, along the ride. Are there hotels in Guayaquil that's included in the package? Uh, we can give this as an option. We only uh, get to Guayaquil uh, on the fourth day at 6 p.m., but we can also quote uh, an overnight hotel in, in Guayaquil, which will come at an extra cost. Um, there are some special prices for travel agents? Yes, as I mentioned, the, all the prices are commissionable, so you, this should be negotiated with your DMC. Uh, this is a question that I would like to answer, and then maybe uh, Islam, you would like to ask something. What is the best time uh, of the year to take uh, the train? So, uh, why I want to ask this question because I have been traveling in some other places and I know that in some places like in North America, Europe, the weather changes a lot and it's so different to go in summertime, winter time and so on. But in Ecuador, year round, it is pretty much the same. So you can enjoy, I would say that Ecuador is a 365 day destination uh, uh, because it, it doesn't change that much. So you can take your train in January or September or, or November and you will actually uh, have the same kind of experience and enjoy uh, the same things. Yes, I just want to add that Ecuador has a spring-like type of climate the whole year. Uh, there are some uh, months of the year where there is a higher probability of rains, but it's hard to determine exactly when. So as Rodrigo said, most of the year you will enjoy a great landscape on the train ride. Yeah, and actually when it rains, uh, if it becomes greener, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Can a wheelchair person travel on a train? Yes, we already answered this question. Mm -hmm. Yes. How much would be the cost for a guide who speaks other languages uh, like French, German, or other? Yeah, we uh, if 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 it's a guide who's going to accompany a group, we apply a special rate with a great discount. So basically, it's uh, to cover the services that are off the train. Okay. Hello. Other journey is on board of cruise train or there is some road uh, in other trains or locomotives? Uh, when uh, Rodrigo answered that we also have the day excursions, which we do in our regular rustic type of coaches, which is like half a day or full day uh, options that you have, which is different from the train yourself. Is the attitude problem for many passengers? Uh, I would like to ask you to answer this one because the train rides uh, in the middle of the Andes, but this is the, uh, the Andes Valley in between the mountains. So it's not as high as, as people sometimes think. So normally you didn't have uh, like high altitude problems in 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 in, in, uh, in Ecuador because you are in the valley among the mountains, which is the uh, um, the how do you say, we call it the, the inter andean valley. Yes, uh, just one small addition. We also have oxygen uh, tanks on board the train. So in case somebody doesn't feel well, we can assist you. Uh, so you, I think you you can uh, be very. <laughs> comfortable with this, so don't worry about uh, the altitude. Do you take groups? Uh, yes, yes, we, we have operated a few groups so far, so yes. Is there an, oppor an opportunity to tie in a photography workshop or have a photography program or uh, the scenery is so spectacular? Yes, we have uh, done a few photo sessions with uh, uh, freelancers and representatives from uh, big uh, newspapers and magazines, so yes, we can do this. If you have some children in Tren Crucero, do you have uh, different activities for them? Um, not really, because uh, the planned activities we have, it's taking the whole group, um, so we don't have anything like a special children activities. However, I would say that activities that the Tren Crucero has are great for children as well. Actually, I have to say that my little girl, seven years old uh, girl, she actually did uh, the Tren de la Libertad of the Freedom Train, which is a half day, a full day tour. And she was so amazed with that one that she's asking for the, for the next one. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, about the new routes, yes, we will have one new by the end of the year. Uh, Rodrigo indicated it's going to be in the north between Otavalo and Ibar. So we have photos of the train and the largest uh, used during the excursion? Uh, yes, you can go on our website, trainecuador.com slash crucero, and you can download some of the pictures, uh, which are in um, um, mid-size. If you need them in, in high resolution, you can contact us by mail, and I'll be glad to help you with this. How many days uh, do you suggest uh, someone should spend in Quito for either pre or post tour? Well, actually, that's a question I would like uh, to answer. Uh, since in September 21 and 22, we're going to have the second seminar, uh, which is going to be focused on the city of Quito. So you will see that uh, actually you can spend a whole week in the city and not, uh, not be bored because there are so many activities and so many things to do. Of course, you're, going to spend, you're not going to spend all your vacation or your holidays here, but, but you will say that, uh, uh, that in the magazine, uh, all you is Ecuador, that's going to be already in circulation next, uh, next month, in the month of August. Uh, you may be already seeing and checking some of the, of the main things to do in, in the city. And, of course, I invite you uh, from now to be part of the, of the next seminar. Um, since you have been already registered to this webinar, it's going to be good that you check that you are registering the database uh, to receive uh, complimentary magazine uh, each two months and the newsletter, of course. So if you can also help us check in this, on, or you can send us an email to make sure that you have, uh, you have been registered on this database, you are going to be receiving this magazine on a complimentary basis. And uh, I think that we run out of time, so we had uh, many questions. Uh, I know that you still have some others, but you can always uh, write to us, and you can actually provide directly to the guys of Tren Ecuador. Uh, the addresses are here. And by tomorrow, don't forget, you will receive uh, uh, a question of five uh, questions that you can answer based on this presentation. This presentation is going to be also uploaded on the same website. And by answering these questions, you will be receiving your diploma or certificate that you have become an expert on train uh, Ecuador and train crusade. Okay? So uh, I thank you very much for your attention and I would like to finish the seminar with my picture and one of the coaches of the train. So thank you very much and I hope to see you again uh, uh, in uh, the September uh, webinar about it. Okay? Have a good day and bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.